All right, let's get going. Uh, this was from uh, last time, right? We saw this last time. Let's see very quickly if anyone remembers what we said uh, last time. All right. I think this was the solution, if I'm not mistaken. All right, very quickly. Let's have a look if you remember this. This was from last. I think I will mute everyone. Aha. So last time it was dynamic exchanges. Now I'm just doing a quick recap. This is the last uh, time we will look at this. Okay, we have new users. Zitong, Jiang Hu, Princess Megan. All right, I'll let everybody enter. Aha, Quoki, you got it. Nice. Quoki is the winner so far. Aha, dynamic exchanges. Where would we like to swap specific pieces in order to make things better for us? That's what we were looking at last time. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. So Quacky and Strategic Seamer, you were the only winners. So Quacky, very quickly, let everybody know what you have noticed here. Exactly. E5, the idea to play Queen D6. We want to swap the Queens on D6 so that a dangerous pass pawn will emerge in our position, right? That's what Quacky is saying, and that's completely correct. We can see that uh, Black has big issues here. Um, I don't know if there was any better move than this, but I think that's the best move. Some people are saying bishop a4, but I think I'll take on e4, and I'm not completely convinced how that would work out. Um, what else did you say here? e takes d5 was also proposed, but uh, I guess in such a situation, black would be okay, right? I can maybe just take with a knight. I don't know if I can take with a pawn, but okay, this is already a bit off uh, topic. We only wanted to recap very quickly what we learned last time about swapping pieces on specific squares, and that's what Quacky showed here, e5, so that we can play queen d6 next turn uh, we're not interested in trading queen queens uh, itself but we're interested in doing that on d6 That's right. all right i get some comments there i think i will mute everyone um, so let's uh, let's uh, get going let's switch subject we are done with dynamic exchanges and today's topic will be active king so uh, very welcome everyone to this first uh, session about active king in the endgame i think it's one of the most basic one of the most important important uh, topics of endgame play and i have made a little collection of examples from last year and this year that we will have a look at here so i'll bring up my first example and i don't think you will need too much time for this so in this game between alexandrov and Pongratov, two strong grandmasters i would simply like to know how you would continue here with the black pieces. Um, the first move is simple. The second move, please be a little selective with your uh, second move, please, if that's possible. All right, I think that's it. So I'll give you uh, just one minute, 15. Try to find a way in which black won this game very quickly. You can see that black is better, of course, in this end game. They have a nice pass pawn on B3. It's blocked right now. But we have to be careful here. Schachmatist, I get the point, but if I trade rooks and I play king d2, are you sure you're winning now? What else do we have? Okay, so you are very close at Chess Samurai. I get the point, of course, your second move. Uh, I get the point. You're on the right track, certainly. So is L008. There was some slight issue with that move. Um, if I remember this correctly. Rook d1, maybe. Rook d1. I'll sack the bishop for the pawn and I'll activate my rook. So uh, that's what I had to tell. Um, who was it, by the way? I'm getting confused here. I get very many answers. Only Amazon got the whole, the whole solution. Okay, good work, Amazon. We have a winner here. Amazon got it 100% right. Right. Okay, I see Chess Amorai at 008 and so on. I see the point. Uh, but I'll play Rook d1 there. And I'll claim that I can sack the rook for the bishop for the pawn, and I'll try to get activity with my rook. Um, so, what's the issue with king c4? I don't see the issue. Yeah, we'll see, Chess Samurai. We'll see, we'll see. So, Amazon, you're the only winner. Please go ahead. What did you notice here? King c5, this is a good move because we actually we don't have so much else to, to do here because we would love to play knight c3 of course we would like to fight against this rook in some way however white could maybe take and play king d2 and this was not completely clear 
Um, going back to the initial position, everybody notices, of course, that black is playing for a win here. The pawn is very strong and so on. King c5 is what Amazon says. It's time to bring in the king. Our other pieces are fairly active, but we need to bring in the king. In the game, um, white played at this point uh, rook b1. And here, some people were just sticking to the topic. They were saying king c4. I understand. This, this makes a lot of sense, what, what you're saying. Bring the king closer. We have some plan like knight c3, uh, push b2, and so on. However, maybe, just maybe, white could play rook d1 here. So my point, my point was that if we play b2, white could sack and try to bring in the rook. I'm, I'm not saying that white will survive this, of course. Uh, probably they won't survive this. But um, after all, chess is a practical game, and... Um, we might be low on time. It's better to look for a safer choice. And that's what Amazin noticed here. So please go on, Amazin. What was your move here? Knight c3. Now, this is a good moment for knight c3 because in this way, we are preventing rook d1. So after white takes on c3, I mean, else uh, the pawn will just run. After white takes, we can see that now um, there is one big factor here, apart from black's strong past pawn. The fact is that their king is very powerful here. So if we just want to avoid any counterplay, we will play like Amazon plays king d4, and this way we also deny them of any possible chance of attacking with their king, which is, would be a good plan for them. And later on, we can just continue here, I guess, rook c2, b2, king c3. So what uh, black did here, very skilled way, they activated their king. Their pieces were already in active places. The only, needed, uh, only thing needed here was to bring in the king. By the way, if I play king d3, trying to prevent king c4. What did you have uh, on your mind here, Amazin? Uh, what move did you did you consider her? There is a very nice uh, knight maneuver here. Those of you who are familiar with chess history, there is a very nice game by Capablanca where he used this knight maneuver. Uh, oh, I have to check. The exactly, chess samurai, you got it. Knight f4, that's right. The knight will travel. There is a... You can check this, no? I think it was... Capablanca was white. I think he moved his knight in in this way or something like that but okay here is black who is performing this idea oh we just want to take that pawn are you sure about that uh amazon is that the best you can get well maybe maybe you're right but i thought of a different plan here with, with black i think there is something better here you don't want the pawn you um go for, aha you go to e1 instead i think this is uh, this is stronger um i i thought so and here suddenly the king cannot uh, control d3 anymore and now pure destruction says king c4 exactly that's what i think and if i'm not mistaken we're about to use the same plan here knight d3 uh, b2 and rook c1 and so on uh, white is completely lost here so why did i pick this first example because i thought it was a good example of where there is nothing else to do we just have to to use the king to improve our position if we rush with the knight for example if we play something like knight c1 i guess white could then take and play King d2. So the knight had to stay on, on e2 so that it would um, cover the square in, in the event of rook takes e2. So right plan here, bring in the king, king c5, later on knight c3, continue with the king and white black pieces will win the game here. Oh, I got LEGS course about attacking with the king in the middle game. Interesting. In the middle game, it's more difficult to attack with the king, right? Uh, okay, there is this famous uh, short T-man game, no, very pretty uh, game and so on. Navarra had a game also where I think he crossed the... He went to h8 with his king. It was very impressive some years ago. Aha. Uh, by the way, I, I was just curious. Knight c3. Yeah, that's what some people were saying. So knight c3 straight away, it allows white to play king d2. So that's the reason why we should have the king a little closer so that the king will also uh, help us in, in our attack, so to speak. So, okay, enough uh, talking, I guess. King c5, we got the point. Just bring the king closer and we should win this game uh, without any uh, major problems. All right, let me show you something from um, Swedish Grandmaster, one of my compatriots, uh, Johnny Hector, very entertaining player, a lot of interesting ideas in the opening, but also in the end game. Uh, it's a very strong player. So I would like to see if you can find a way in which uh, Yone Hector continued here with the white pieces. All right, you can see that the king is in check. I would like to know the most powerful way of continuing with white here. There are several ways to win, but I'm interested in the most uh, practical way. All right, I'll give you one minute 30 for this. All right. 
So why to play? Safe to say we have to move our king. The question is what to do with the king, which would be the best destiny for the king. Please notice that uh, there are several ways. No, I'm just looking for the most practical one. All right, Chess Samurai, you got it. That's what the grandmaster played in the game, which I think is the best path. But I can see it, that a lot of people are actually going for the other path, which is also K. Okay. Like GM, Amazon, Titan Chess, Yugoslav, Circle, Ryan, Pure Destruction, Awesome Owen, Adi Chess, Quirky Tactical Magician. That's okay also. It's just slightly more complex. Okay, Guru, Eric, and Medina Tiger, you were very close. Aha, you were extremely close. So we have some more winners here. Also, Roger, Princess, Megan, and L008, uh, they have found the right way to go here. So, uh, nice. Excellent work. Uh, yeah, you will probably uh, disagree about the fact that uh, there are more than, there can be more than one solution, but still one solution can be better than the other one or something like that. Sometimes I think we should be very practical. Who knows the time at this point of the game, how much time did I have on the clock? So we should be practical. And uh, yeah. That's what uh, Black did in the game. All right, Royale, Shakmatist, you also got it. Great work. So let's turn to Chess Samurai. All right, Chess Samurai, you're on. Uh, let us know how to continue with White Hill. Uh, you can just move the pieces if you like, uh, Chess Samurai. I gave you the pawn. Thanks to this great chessable. Uh, platform, we can uh, move the pieces. I don't get any answer from uh, Chess Samurai, so I'll, I will pick another student. Uh, okay, here, here he goes, Chess Samurai. So, of course, we don't have any interest of keeping our king on the last rank. We would like to activate the king. So, King C3 was played in the game. Rook takes. Then King B4. Then King B4. It's clear that we're using the king as an attacking piece. In the game, black tried a5, trying to swap pawns. But uh, Chess Samurai is not interested in this. Uh, Chess Samurai uses the king in attacking fashion. So this is the pawn that we would like to queen. And for that to happen, we should try to eliminate that pawn. Exactly. So that's how the game went. That's how the game went. And uh, White went on to win rather effortlessly. They played here knight e4 check. Uh, not so big details here. Please notice the picture here. Actually, material is equal. However, uh, the activity of the pieces, it's just a huge uh, difference. Now, Black's king is not active and so on. White could have pushed the pawn, but first they played here control move, rook f4, so that the rook can sometimes give check perhaps. Rook e3 and d5. White went on to win here without much uh, difficulties in this position. Black is badly coordinated. White, on the other hand, is perfectly assisting their pass pawns in this position. So that was the supposed solution. Just run with the king, attack that pawn. I think of all these three pawns, the pawn that I'm more mostly interested in is in the six, c6 pawn because I would like to help my deep on the queen. Uh, however, if you said king e3, consider yourself as uh, winners, okay? Consider yourself as winners also, but it's a more complex path. You have to see some tactical tricks here. I was checking this a little. Uh, for starters, if I play knight e4 check, uh, you must, of course, not step on the f file because in that case, I can pick up your rook. You have to play king, king e4 and after rook e2, you have to play king f5. Yeah, this is also possible. Fancy variation, king f6. Very pretty way to play also. And here you can play, uh, I think you can play rook c7 simply. And again, we're interested in taking this pawn. So if you feel that this is easier than the solution that, uh, uh, who was it? Chess Samurai showed, uh, consider yourself winners. This is also possible to, to use the king in that direction, king e3. I think there was some other variation also. Knight e4, check, king e4, um, king g7 also. This must also be considered, of course. If rook g7, king f6. Um, rook takes here. We have a rook end game. Maybe we don't want a rook end game when we're a pawn up, but okay. Some of you might also claim that after the move king g6, white can also go for a knight end game like this. And probably white should win here after all. They're a pawn up and knight endings. A pawn is usually worth very much. So if you like, you can also play like this. However, I'm very much uh, more co comfortable with, with, with the solution that we saw here. Just bring in the king 
we attack this pawn with our king and in this way we get ready to queen all right so that's about uh, king uh, activity in the end game so far we use the king as an attacking piece please notice that tactically speaking we could of course consider move like king d1 so that they cannot take the pawn with check because in that case i mean we can take the knight however here i think with knight e4 black will have counterplay you know that um, uh, perpetual right there is some kind of perpetual sometimes with the rook on the second rank we'll have to be careful not to allow that and so on so safe to say this is not practical please remember if you have this choice this kind of choice between playing actively or passively uh, usually we should play actively so all right let's uh, continue our next example it's from a game between Alexienko with the white pieces and Romanian Grandmaster Deak playing black so let's see this one should be also very easy for you by now you already know the the picture here you're playing with the black pieces you can see that material is equal but black is clearly more active we can already uh, notice that black is happy to have activated their king not so white that's already a substantial advantage for uh, black in this case however i would like to know how you face with this uh, situation the move number three, I think, is the most important one. All right. Move number three. I think I will quiz you up to move number four only. So one minute, 15. Let's go for this. Let's see if you can find a way in which Deak managed to win this game very, very quickly. Take your time, please. Take your time. There are several options here. Um, like I told you, the king is an attacking piece. Remember that. We're in the end game. So use your king for attacking purposes, please. Okay, I get the point. Amazon, Princess, Megan, Awesome Oven, Adi Chess, you make room for your bishop. That makes a lot of sense. I, I don't know if I could play simply King F1, maybe. All right, Strategic Skimmer, Eric, Charles, Hua, you got it. Everything right. That's exactly what followed in the game. Uh, interesting move by Yugoslav Berserker uh, and uh, Yitong Jiang Hu. Interesting idea, improving the bishop. Yeah, many ways to play here for sure. Uh, okay, we have several more winners. Also, Tori Chess, uh, Kwaki, GM, Shahmatist found this one. Great work. Uh, so please remember to do this stuff in your games also. Yeah, not only here, but also when you're sitting at the board in some tournament, make sure to use your king in the most active way possible. Aha, very, you were very close, uh, Hong Pao. You were very close. Uh, some kind of prophylactic move there and yeah a lot of people were on the right track so to speak um but uh yeah let's see carlos medina tiger pando you also found it so strategic skimmer you were the fastest one please go ahead how do you continue with black here so king d6 we have some kind of path for our king in the game white didn't let that happen they are trying to create some kind of barrier so that the king won't enter however uh, Black has noticed that the pawn on a4 is very weak also. So they simply brought the king over there to take this pawn. Exactly, you got it right. A great work, uh, strategic symbol. Thank you. There were other moves that we could consider, of course. Some people were saying e4. I think this is also possible. I'm not completely sure how white should react to this. Uh, I was thinking maybe bring in the king. Uh, sooner or later I should do that. Maybe Black can play king e5 though. I don't know if I can use the same ideas in the game. Play knight c2, try to uh, survive there for a while uh, maybe maybe this is possible yeah maybe e4 is also also good um, but what they played in the game looks much simpler no king d6 bringing in the king no reason to commit any of these uh, pawns uh, by the way somebody was saying knight e2 here but we shouldn't play moves like that right we're just helping white to to get their king a little closer so yeah it's better just to continue with our plan king c5 and after King f1. We had some other moves here also. Some people were saying e4, some people were saying d4. I think both of them are perfectly possible. However, it's much simpler to play this way. We also always look for simplicity, no, in the end game. We are low on time usually, so let's not make uh, things too complex. King e1, king a5, king d2. Please continue, strategic skimmer. Yeah, this is very easy, of course. But there is one last move that I would like to quiz you for. I think I will quiz everyone for the last move. No, don't play d4 here. I was saying don't play d4, but... Yeah, maybe you can play d4 also. Well, I'm not sure. I mean, knight c4, you can take the pawn. Right. Yeah, I guess d4 is also fine then. Maybe I can play knight a3, though. Is that possible? 
to bring that knight over there? Or does this make any difference? Uh, well, it's, it appears as if black is winning anyway. So I think d4 doesn't ruin, ruin anything. Uh -huh. But in the game, they just took on e4. All right. Knight takes, king takes, knight e3. All right. Let's see if we can do another quiz here. Let's do another quiz very quickly. So I would like to know the fastest way to win this game. All right. I would like to, to know the fastest game, the fastest way of winning this game. I'll just quiz you for two moves here. Fastest way. That's right. GM, HDHS, Amazon. Okay, Charles, uh, I can forgive you for that. Um, that's perfectly fine, what you're saying. Most people are finding the right solution here. Medina Tiger, Princess Megan, Yugoslav, Berserker, Pure Destruction, Hank, Chess Samurai, L008, Adi Chess, Al19, Hong Pao. You all got it. Oh, D4, so people want to play. Interesting. Interesting. But not, uh, not necessarily needed, no, here. So, uh, GM, please uh, go ahead. What was your choice here? Exactly. So this pattern, of course, you, you recognize this from even from pawn end games, right? You bring in the king before the opponent's king could get closer. If this was a, some other end game, this would be very important to restrict the opponent's king. But also we can use the king as an attacking piece uh, and so on. So knight xt5, uh, black simply continued with their plan. They just uh, ran with the pawn here. The fact that also white is unable to create some kind of blockade, right? This uh, makes a huge difference. Uh, the bishop can always touch the, the a1 square and so on. So yeah, white is completely lost here. Knight b6, a4, and white resign in this game for obvious reasons. No, the bishop will come here, and they, the pawn will run and so on. Uh, I don't think that line is good for black. Oh, you, you are considering a variation here. Bishop a7. Interesting. Let's go back. Let's go back. That pawn, I think it's not uh, relevant here, right? Bishop a7, trying to get into the pawn game. Knight takes, bishop takes, f2. I guess white should hurry to play king c2 to deprive black of that square. Probably this is also winning, um, but it makes things slightly more slightly more complex, no? I don't know if I could dream of some kind of blockade. Uh, put my knight on e4, maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know. If you compare this to the other one, I think this one is more complex, no? Uh, this should also win somehow. Maybe you could put the bishop on d4 to restrict me a little and and start pushing the pawn. Or King b5 says tactical magician. Yeah. I was planning to put my knight on on e4, like I was saying. Yeah. Or King b3, maybe, now that I can... No, oh, but you can then enter the king. Yeah, safe to say black should win here in many ways. Aha. So, yeah, many ways to win, but uh, certainly the most pretty one, King b3, very nice, restricting white a little, and then we should just push this pawn. So, very nice play by Deak. He showed here... I mean, there were other moves here. Some people were saying improving the bishop, like we were discussing e4 is another option. But I think simplicity rules in the end game, right? King d6, this is a very pleasant way to play. We have different routes for our king, depending on what white plays. All right. Uh, so far, I think these examples have been very simple. Let's now check king activity, king's activity in a different situation. All right. Let me bring up something else. This game was played uh, this year, I think just a few weeks ago, in the in the United States. Uh, Rajes with white and Sokolin with the black pieces. All right, very complex endgame, uh, but not for you, of course. So I would like to know how you think black can win this endgame in the most uh, pleasant way. All right, I'll quiz you for uh, some five moves here. Okay, here we go. So, black to play, I would like to know the best continuation for black in this double-edged uh, endgame. You can see we have queen versus rook and bishop. Both sides have passed pawns. Aha, take your time, Nates and Yugoslavian Barsorker. You should think a little more. It's not as simple as that, I think. Actually, that's what black played in the game, which is, in this case, it's not uh, a good sign. All right. So, Amazon, you basically got it. A great work. That also works. Quacky, oh, you were very, very close. Nice, nice. Yeah, you got it. I mean, we talked about this before, right? Chessable Classroom is a great place, but I'm unable to provide several correct solutions. I can only provide one correct solution. So, unfortunately, if you deviate from that path, I cannot do anything. 
but uh, consider yourself as uh, winners here um amazon strategic seamer carlos pure destruction alg eric uh quacky and ryan medina tiger you got even faster even further uh, chess samurai the human person you were also on the right track there were many ways to play so yeah uh, if you got the first move right you could probably consider yourself as winners here so um, great work yeah quacky ryan medina tiger tactical magician that was what I was expecting, more or less. Nobody got it 100% like my variation, but that doesn't matter. Here it's important simply to, to understand the spirit of this uh, of this position. Means Fengs, you were also very close. Uh, but I guess in that case, I'll play D7 uh, Means Fengs, and I'll trade those pawns. We will speak about that. So um, great work. Let's uh, listen to... Ryan, all right, Ryan, you're on. How do you continue here with the black pieces? King f6, we should use the king in active fashion, please. Uh, this is very important to understand. Uh, we were speaking about the king as an attacking piece. Here is actually a defending piece, but uh, it's a very important piece. Not so many pieces left on the board, so we should use our king for any possible purpose. If we run with a pawn, like some people were saying, this is what happened in the game, unfortunately, white can now run with their pawn. And there will be a trade of these two pawns, after which white will create some kind of fortress. Black tried in the game h5, trying to spice up things on the king side. However, after d7, queen takes, rook takes, king f6, white simply played g4 here. And it was impossible for black to break through, mainly because, I mean, I can always play h4 if I like to create a square for my queen, but I cannot enter with the king in any way, right? I can, as long as the rook stays here, I can never enter. And there's no way that white will be Tsukstwang here. They will always have some move with the rook. So this is a complete uh, fortress. Uh, all right, uh, Hank uh, is saying, what about king f6? At what moment you mean, Hank? Uh, not here, I guess. Here, king f6, I played d7, and in in it's exactly the same story, right? Uh, queen takes, rook takes, and I think this should be a fortress. Uh, somehow it should be a fortress. Even, I think even g4 is possible. If king e7 to push a five, I guess even g4 should be okay. I don't think uh, white can, black can progress here. Before, no, king e7. What king e7? No, king e7, no, queen e7. Did I blunt or something? Or what happened? I I'll queen and, and I'll take the pawn, right? Or what are we speaking about? You want to play f5 here? But I don't, I don't think this works. Uh, if you tell me that this is winning, I won't believe you. <laughs> I don't think that this will win. White is very safe. White is safe here. This should be some kind of fortress. Uh, here says Hank. Oh, th that's what you were speaking about. Well, if you think this wins, interesting, but uh, I don't think so. After all, material is almost equal here also, right? It's, it's equal. So much better if we continue like, uh, who was it? Ryan was explaining. All right, Ryan, please uh, do this again. What did you play with black? King f6, the king takes up the task of defending against the passed pawn so that the queen can dedicate itself fully to assisting black's passed pawn. All right, let's see what can happen here. I'll try, um, what will I try here? d6, I guess, yeah, I don't know. Exactly, so that if d7, we can always take this pawn. The only way in which uh, white could try to spice up the game would be with this move h4. There are several ways to win here. White's idea is to play bishop h3, but this one is probably the simplest one, just to run with the pawn, and we let them take our queen. We let them take our queen because we know that our past pawns will win the game. So, yeah, play whatever you like. Yeah, exactly. Rook takes... I think you can take either way here, right? You can get... Uh, Choose for yourself. No way I can stop this monster pass pawns. So black is is winning here. Exactly. I think I had king e7 in the in my line, but it doesn't matter really. King c5 looks looks nicer, of course. King c5 in the spirit of the <coughs> of the previous example, right? To, to bring in the king. So summing up, yeah. Thanks, uh, Ryan. Great work. Summing up what we have seen here, black would have won this game without much difficulty had they used the king in active fashion. I mean, had they used a king. Using the king to take up the fight against the pass pawn. Uh, in the game, they hurry to play c3, and the game was a draw because white is able to swap this pawn for that pawn. Uh, so, had we played king f6 instead, nothing of that would have happened. Our king would intervene, and which would always 
and fight against that opponent. We can see also that White King, of course, cannot do the same thing. So very important to to have this way of thinking, no? Use your king in in active fashion. All right, let me show you another game which was played just uh, two weeks ago in the Finnish Championship, the Championship of Finland. Um, let's see if we can understand this together. Hold on one moment. Uh, by the way, I remember many years ago, I think it was Grandmaster Sherbakov who said that uh, not using the king in the endgame is one of the most typical endgame mistakes not using our king, um, especially among young players, I think. So this is certainly something that we can we can all improve, young or old, we can all improve in this in this situation. All right, let's have a look at this position. We are playing with white pieces. You can see that uh, in theory, white is happy because they have rook and bishop, a good team, and they have a distant pass ball. But on the other hand, it's clear that black is very active. The rook is better placed than white's rook. The knight is, is very active in the center. And not to be forgotten, black's king is certainly more active than white's king. White uh, actually lost this game in just five moves. They lost the game in five moves, which seems incredible, right? Incredible that we can lose this seemingly equal position in five moves. So how did you lose them? Yeah, you will see. You will see. So we will uh, issue the quiz here. You're playing with the white pieces. I would like to know what is for you the most uh, practical way to, to continue here with the white pieces, all right? I'll quiz you for four moves. Uh, if you don't get it all right, it doesn't matter, but hopefully you catch the spirit in this exercise, all right? Why to play and just make the best you can. You don't need to win this game. I'm happy if you can just save yourself because black is more active here. Okay, interesting move by Chess Samurai. I like your move. I'm not sure what I will play against it, actually. Um, what would I play? Interesting. Eric and Strategic Seymour, you have the same idea. Um, who got closest here? Let's see. Carlos, Yugoslavian, Berserk, or Pure Destruction. I did chess. You're also very close. Okay, Hank and Nates, you got to move three. Um, but I don't like the, that third move, actually, that you play. It looks very passive to me. But uh, But you were close, yeah. So... Since we're speaking about the king today, we're speaking about the king, um, the idea is somehow related to king activity, no? This, uh, this case is related to activating our king. But how can we activate our king if it's cut off along the second rank? Yeah, that's a good question. But okay, we'll see, we'll see. We'll soon uh, figure this out, all right? All right, uh, if you give the check on move two, I think there is nothing wrong with that either. But that's actually what I played in the game. So, um, Mean Sphinx, you're also close. But why do you protect that pawn? Hong Pao, you also protect the pawn. Aha. Uh -huh. We'll see, we'll see. All right, so h4 is perfectly possible also. Usually such moves are always good in the endgame. We can give our king some space. We can certainly not play king h2 due to knight f3, but we can maybe insert this check and then uh, get, try to get out our king. Yeah, I don't know what black would play against h4. Maybe I could play rook b2, rook b2 try to take this pawn. Uh, maybe. Then we can maybe play rook f1 check. Uh, oh, actually, you can play like this. Now, now I understand. You can play like this, and you have actually trapped black's rook. Yeah, certainly the trade of rooks, it's very, very favorable to, to white because uh, that makes uh, it possible for them to bring in the king and so on. Yeah, you're right. The game would most certainly end it in this way. So good point. Good point if you played h4. I didn't notice this, actually. Nice uh, little trick uh, waiting for me to commit with rook b2. So what else could I play? Could I play maybe king f5? I mean, that would be in the spirit of our topic today, right? Active king. Could I bring in the king here maybe? Uh, or even come closer. I don't know. Don't forget that there might be mating uh, options also. What if knight f5 after f4, h4 says Medina Tiger? Knight f5. Yeah, that's another move that, that white should probably be a little careful about. Knight takes h4 is now in the air. Yeah, nice. Nice move. Uh, thanks, uh, Medina Tiger. That, that looks like a nice move. Rook e4 says uh, Amazin. Aha. Right, so maybe this also works. Yeah, this, this might uh, work also. I think it's a typical kind of endgame situation where many ways will lead to a draw, but uh, sometimes in practical play, 
players make make mistakes and so on. Uh, this might also be working. Yeah, rookie four with not letting them do anything. What we were saying, king f five, and what did what did you say here? King f four. We can just keep checking. Oh, bishop d three. You mean is, is that what you mean? Um, who is speaking here? Titan chess. Oh, I see. King f four, rook e four, king g three, and rook e three. We just keep on checking. That's what you mean. I take, and you continue to give more checks. Is that so? Or what's what's going on here? I don't know. I get the feeling I, I picked up a pawn here, but it doesn't matter, right? You have some kind of perpetual. All right. Yeah. So oh, you can also yeah, perpetual. It seems nice. So probably that also works. So h4, that should also be possible. Uh, knight f5, rook e4. Maybe I can play knight e6 though, and I'll play e4. Yeah, this I like for black, of course. This I like. So maybe rook e2 to try to trade pieces. Yeah, white would be very very happy to trade, but I think black shouldn't trade. And once I don't trade, well, then white's king is getting closer. So I don't know. Does black have any real chance of of winning this? I think so. Maybe no. You see, king safety. I mean, king activity, not king safety. King activity again. Knight f5 coming up. Maybe some knight xc4 and rook a3. Um, yeah, I think uh, at least practical problems here. If you defend like stockfish, you can probably make it. Mean sphinx, you're raising your hand. All right, mean sphinx. Uh, what do you have on your mind? Should I give you the white pieces or the black pieces? Whatever you say. Should I go back maybe? Yeah, you were raising your hand. Or maybe it, it was in uh, protest against the white's play here in this uh, in this variation. Yeah, who knows? Uh, never mind, never mind. Let's let's continue. Okay, just by accident. All right, no problem. So tricky position, no tricky position. Let's uh, go back to Ryan. Was, no, who was speaking on this one? Does anybody remember who, who was who was showing their solution? Or nobody was showing their solution. Hank, I think it was right. Uh, raise your hand and ask him how to raise your hand. How do you raise your hand? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's uh, not so difficult, I think. There is some option there. So who who was speaking? Let's let's go back to get this right. Uh, Hank, I think you were the one, right? So please go ahead. What was your solution here? We would like to activate our king. We can't do that because black is controlling the, the second rank. So we, we give check. In the game, they, go, they went that way because they wanted to bring in the king this way. And here we have our key move, rook f2. So if you got this far, I think it's perfect. This is exactly what you should do. If now black takes, I think it's white who's playing for a win here. Uh, this kind of endgame, open center, the bishop is stronger than the knight. We have a passed pawn and so on. For sure, it's white who is trying to win this game. Aha. So uh, what we should look at here instead in this variation is rook a3, I guess. So here, some people were saying rook b2. But now it's time to play in a more active way. Now we can uh, activate a rook. And after, exactly, you're right. Uh, uh, who, who is playing, by the way? Uh, me, no, it's not Min Sphinx. It's Hank. All right. And now, Hank, you can take this pawn, of course. But you could also play in the spirit of, of our topic today, if you like. It's up to you. I mean, I don't blame you if you take the pawn. Uh, but the move that I was exactly, bravo. That's the move that I was asking for. Rook, uh, King f2, I mean. Let's bring the king a little closer. They can take this pawn if they like. Uh, we don't care. We can probably take that other pawn. Oh, we have a cheap tactic here. So tactics alert. It seems we have a exactly we have a cheap tactic. The knight is actually <laughs> pinned after that. Yeah, that's a funny way. Actually, I managed to lose this game with with uh, black. That's uh, impressive. Yeah. So even that is possible. Aha, uh -huh, even that is possible. I cannot take the pawn. So king f2, that's safe to say our king over here. We are ready to bring up the king. We don't care if we lose some pawn, perhaps in the process. If they give check, we can just bring the king closer. So this is what I mean, uh, guys. This is the picture I would like to see here. We have our king active. The game is going to end in a draw, that's for sure. But uh, but okay, it's already pleasant for us. Now let's have a look at what happened in the game. White played rook f1, but for a different reason. After king e7, they played rook f7, all right? They want to pick up this pawn. Still, they are not lost. They're just making things more complex for them. So black played king d6. And here, actually, I think it was... Um, what's the name of, of, this, uh, of this student uh, who is speaking a lot in the chat? Uh, oh, I don't remember anymore. Was it Titan Chess, maybe? Or, or it was... Um, 
Yeah, never mind. But the move h4 came up. Now this is a very nice move. h4 is a nice move because in this way we get ready to swap more pawns. h4, h5, take this pawn and so on. In the worst case scenario, maybe we could take the pawn with the bishop and we save ourselves to some rook versus rook and knight endgame. So this is a very practical choice, h4. If e4, we can just continue to run. Like I'm saying here, we are ready to, to just give up the pawn on, on e2 whenever needed. Right now, it's not needed. No, we can take the pawn and if they play e2, we can just play king f2. So it's not needed right now. But in the worst case, I mean, we can take it and we will make a draw in that ending. Aha. So, yeah, we don't lose this in five moves, but you'll see, you'll see. So, white played the obvious move here. Of course, they took the pawn. After all, chess players, uh, very often, they like to take such pawns. Uh, myself, I have also taken such a pawn on some occasion. And now there came e4. All right. I hope everybody understands now that this is not the same thing. If we go back to the beginning, look at this position and compare with... Where are we? With that position. So it's three moves later. Black has lost a pawn. But now, careful here. You're right, the Titan says. You're right. Last chance in this game is to play h4. I'm not completely sure what will happen after this. But there are chances for a draw. If e3, we're now very happy that our king can escape. Right? Uh, stop that, uh, please. Uh, that spamming in the chat. It's not for that, okay? So, yeah, black uh, won't win this game. We can play even rook g7 and find a way to just give up the bishop for the pawn. In that way, we would make a draw here most probably. However, in the game, white thought that they could play it the other way around. They played at this point rook g7. All right, let's turn the tables here and I'll quiz you very quickly for the last few moves of this game. All right, that's it. How did black win this game? Not difficult. Move order, I think, is important. If you play that way, Titan Chess and Ryan, Mina Tiger, I can use that H4 idea, I guess. So you should play the other way around, please. Chess Samurai, you got it. If you play E3, I think you give me a second chance here to save the game. A last chance, I mean, to save the game. Okay, Eric, you got it also. Pando, great work. So it's a matter of move orders, right? A lot of tactics in such endgames. Um, by the way, don't forget that mate is very often an important topic in endgame play. A uh, lot of mating ideas coming up. All right, Pando, Adi, Chess, Quaki, Tactical Magician, Amazon, and so on. Uh, please go ahead, uh, Eric. Uh, show us uh, how do you win this with luck. Okay, so I first played... Um... Uh, rook a1 check because um if king f2 uh you have e3 check and can't aha very nice very nice Knight of of five. that's right and if after bishop uh bishop f1 you can play e3 and you're threatening uh uh e2 and knight e2 exactly both threats are very strong so actually why to resign the game at this point yeah thanks uh, eric great work White resigned because there is no way they can save themselves against both threats. If you played e3 straight away, I suppose I can take the pawn or perhaps straight away play h4 and I'm ready to give up the bishop for the pawn at, at some moment and I should be able to make it draw. However, black didn't miss this chance in the game. They played first rook a1. It's important to understand what uh, Eric understood here. King f2, the move that we were speaking so much about, suddenly it's tactically losing because white has placed their rook on a very unfortunate square. I must say this is like a study-like uh, solution. Now, it looks like some kind of study. That it's a perfect position. Now, there is no square for the king. Perfect harmony between black species. Rook h6. Yeah, rook h6. You're right, uh, Titan Chess. If they had played rook h6. I mean, it's also a very ugly move to put the rook there. But it would be the same thing. Exactly. Rook, check, and e3. So, safe to say, h4. is time to play h4 here. Um, also, please notice that if king f1, I might play e3 and I'm actually th threatening mate. So please don't forget about the idea of, of mate in the endgame. This comes up very much. So here we are again. White played four consecutive rook moves and they lost the game. Had they thought a little more about participating in the battle with the king, I'm pretty sure this game would have finished some other way. So we were saying that rook f1 check was the best move 
Uh, of course, it's uh, tempting to play Rook F7 at some point, but we should first make play this intermediate move so that we can somehow bring in our king. All right, let's uh, move on. Let's move on. I have a similar example, which I think is very nice. So let's see if we bring it up. Uh, let's see here. This one. Yeah, this one is very nice. From uh, last year's uh, Ar Armenian Championship. Let's see. Um, I like this example very much. Let's see if you can understand this uh, correctly. We have a rook and a knight uh, endgame here, equal material. Both sides have very active rooks, that's safe to say. <coughs> White seems to be a little more active because they're also hitting the pawn on b5. My simple question to you is what you think that black should play here. My, my simple question is, okay, I'll, I'll put this with black species then. I would just like to know, um, or should we do this in a different way? Uh, let's do this in a different way. I know you like the quiz, but let's do it in a different way. We'll use the chat at this point. I'll write a question to you. So please stop all uh, irrelevant uh, chatting, all right? Between uh, knight e5 and knight e3, uh, which one should be avoided and why? That's the question for, for all of you. Between knight e5 and knight e3, we have these two moves on the menu. Which of these two moves do you think black should avoid? And, and consequently, which one should they play? So write me something to the chat, please. Write me something to the chat. OK, I should make the chat private for a little while. Uh, all right. Um, Aha, we ha I have a lot of uh, good answers here. Yeah, nice. Right, a good answer by Strategic Seymour, Titan Chess. Uh, okay, I can see most people. You're right, uh, Princess Megan. That's a good way of, of putting it. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, so most people got it right. We can probably stop here. Uh, we can stop here. I'll make the chat public again because you have a lot of information that you would like to, to share, right? Uh, so set the chat public. And yeah, you're right, Yitong Yahoo. Yeah, most people got this right, so I'm happy for you. You understood this perfectly. In the game, they didn't understand this, and they, they lost the game. So let's see, who can we invite on this one? Somebody who hasn't talked uh, uh, before. Yeah, Guru, you, you have a good answer. So uh, please go ahead, uh, Guru. What do you think Black should play? You can just move the pieces, uh, Guru. Exactly. We play knight e5, we give up the pawn on b5. We couldn't save it anyway. What can we do with this knight, Guru? Exactly. We will start some kind of counterplay against white's king. There should be drawing uh, uh, scenarios, no? We talked about some drawing mechanism with the rook and the knight. Maybe this is possible somehow in the future. Uh, I mean, I for sure I know this one. Yeah, you all... You all know this one, right? How is it? You put your rook here and... Oh, but I, okay, I will mute everyone. Um, no, my, my point was to put the rook down and play knight e5 and knight e3, but I can now see that knight e5 is coming. So that's not working. Um, what would we play then? Uh, anyone who thinks they know the answer, please go ahead. Maybe we should put the rook down and put the knight here anyway, right? I don't think black is lost here. Because also with b7, we can always come with the knight and, and attack the rook, right? Or, well, or maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, you will have to correct me. Uh, maybe this is not working for, for white, for black. Uh, all right, let's scroll down. So you said rook d2 is more accurate than rook b2. Yeah, I understand what you mean. But what if I play like this and I give this check? Now you will never give me perpetual, right? Yeah, so th this cannot be good for... Uh, for, for black, right? So did we make some mistake? I know this is the right solution, <laughs> but uh, I, I can't really remember what was the what happens if I if I just uh, run with the pawn. There should be a, a, an explanation. Some people are raising hands here. Means, thanks, tactical magician. Uh, tactical magician wants to say something. All right, please go ahead, tactical magician. You have the black pieces now. You have noticed something here, maybe. Uh, a bit earlier. Oh, I don't get what. Instead of knight g ninety three check, doesn't it not, just work the same way? Oh, but now we're speaking about solution. You're speaking about ninety three here. Yeah. 
No, but that's a, that's a different story. Uh, hold on, thanks, uh, technical information. But that's a different story. We will come to that. Okay. I know the best movie ni is ninety five. I thought this was drawing somehow, but I cannot remember. I cannot understand really why why should it be a draw. Um, let's have a last uh, try at this. Uh, Rook B two. We were saying no. We I, said here. Said oh, there was another person. Pe right, Rook E two. Maybe right. is that point? Maybe. No, it's not, that's not working, right? Or is it working? Oh, this was very confusing. <laughs> I must say, this was very confusing. What's, what's going on here? Does black have some kind of perpetual or they don't? Knight d6. Oh, you want to go to d6? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Rookie one, exactly. Didn't this work somehow? Rookie one and we just continue. No, but it's not a perpetual now because the king can go that way, right? Yeah, this was very confusing. This was very confusing. Um... I must say, because there is no, but by the way, this is not a perpetual, right? Because the king can always go that way. So it's, it's not, it's not a perpetual anymore. Yeah. Tricky, tricky business. Uh, for sure. Black will have chances here to, to make a draw, but it was not as easy as I thought. So rook b2, b6. Yeah. We'll talk about that. The tactical. We'll talk about that very, very soon. I guess this must be the right solution, right? Knight e5, knight check. King comes here b7 and we play knight d7 so yeah what 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 happened black is fine black will take the pawn and they will make a draw right so i don't think there is much more to it uh, black should make a draw here by rook uh, by knight d7 at some point that was the right choice now let's uh, go back to the situation here so we were speaking with um with who we were speaking guru right guru you were you were explaining this so guru why didn't you like 93 what's wrong with 93 that looks like a fancy move right we're bringing the knight to g4 attacking this pawn and so on why is that a bad idea you're right guru yeah i gave you the pawn but oh i gave you the wrong pawn all right now you have the white pawn so please go ahead exactly that's what white uh, black either missed or mis-evaluated during the game king f3 knight g4 black is dreaming of mating white but of course that didn't happen right Aha, Titan Chase, you got it. That's what happened in the game. Yeah, please go ahead, uh, Guru. We're waiting for you. Black is the one getting mated. Exactly, exactly. So I can't take the pawn here because now it's actually white using their king in this way. Yeah, we can make a few more moves. White is having a huge advantage here. Exactly. And uh, you can take the pawn or you can even play this funny move because black can't take the pawn. In that case, they are losing one of these pieces. So... Safe to say, black is in big trouble here. This pawn is falling off. As soon as the H pawn is free, white will play for mate and also for advancing their pass pawn, of course. So typical mistake, I would say. We fall for this fancy move. Knight 3 looks like a very fancy move. Uh, the king, we would like the king to go down and give check and so on. However, it's actually the other way around. It's the black king which will suffer now. So in the game, white noticed, I mean, black noticed at this point that something is wrong here. They tried rook d6, but it was already too late. White played a very strong move, rook e7. They don't want to move this knight. It's, it's very well placed, and they simply want to get on with their plan. So knight h6 was played. And uh, yeah, please go ahead, uh, Guru. You have the pawn, so please go ahead. Finish them off, please. What did white play here? King g5, exactly. Knight g8. What a horrible place for the knight. No, what a horrible place for the knight. It was very active some while ago, and now it's... It's a horribly passive piece. So that's how the game went. White played here f3. They had a huge advantage. Um, we don't have to look at the whole game, but there is one funny thing about this game. White didn't manage to uh, mate black. And suddenly they said, all right, I'll use the king for something else. They transferred the king to the opposite flank. They played the king f4. Very, very nice. Smart thinking. If my opponent is defending the king side, let's see if I can do something on the queen side. So king f4, rook b7, king e5, knight e7, king d6. It's like the example that we saw with king d6, king the deak example, attacking that pawn. This time we're attacking that pawn. King d6, knight g8, poor black, have the knight on g8, king c6, rook a7, king takes b5. And white went on to win. So why is this? Yeah, black king is cut off and can't help, says Titan Chess. You're completely right. What a horrible picture for black. Total metamorphosis in this game, no? Black was... Probably okay in the beginning. They were not even down material. However, like somebody said here, I think it was uh, Megan said it's 
uh, black is helping white to activate their king. That's exactly what happened here. So please, careful with these guys, careful with letting your opponent's king improve. Uh, a better choice, like Guru said, was knight e5. And uh, we can bring the knight to, to g4 or maybe to d3, depending on what happens. Also, we are preventing them from playing king f3. All right. Uh, what else? Let's see some other example here. Um, let's see. One of the best players right now, Russian Grandmaster Fedoseev with the black pieces. Let's see if perhaps you are familiar with this example. I liked it very much. We are playing with the black pieces. Gareyev with the white pieces and playing black is Fedoseev game from last year. All right. I'll quiz you on this one. You're playing with the black pieces. Uh, by now, you know the topic of uh, today's uh, session. So this should not be difficult for you. I'll just quiz you for how many moves should I quiz you for? Yeah, I'll quiz you for three moves only. Let's see here. Black to play. Try to get a big advantage with black in this end game. We can see that black is a pawn up. However, white's rook and bishop are probably more active than black's rook and knight. I see chess samurai. If you play like that, perhaps rook g6. Is that possible? L0, 0, 8, and Amazin. That's completely right. He put the king on the light squ on the door square, though. Um, probably taking into account white's light square bishop. Princess Megan, you got it all right. That's exactly what Fedusev played in this game. Uh, what a nice sequence of moves, right? Uh, for those of you who haven't uh, sent your answer yet, I can disclose to you that the right uh, solution consists of playing four moves with the same piece. All right? Four moves with the same piece. Which piece might that be? Well, not too difficult. Huh? So let's see. A lot of people wanted to play king d6 on move one. Wow. Surprising. Okay, uh, we have a lot of people who got it right also. So only Princess Mega got it completely right, and we have a big group who got it like 95% right. L008, Amazon, Titan, Chess, Guru, Pando, Al, Google, Chess, Eric, and Ryan. All right. That's about it. Strategic Simmer, you were also very close. Yeah, you went for the other pawn, but think about it, Strategic Simmer. Which of these two pawns do you think is the most tasty one? Oh, mouse sleep. <laughs> okay. Some people have mouse sleep also. So anyway. Let's see. King d6 was proposed by a big group. Uh, I would suppose that white would play rook g6 here, right? So if you protect the pawn, I'll take that one, and I will hope that I can uh, run with my h pawn. And of course, I will also make sure to bring in my king at some point. King d5. Oh, you want to continue here? King d5. Yeah, what would we play with white here? Um, what is black's threat? Is this a good move for king? F this moment for king f2, maybe? Maybe we should stick to our idea today. Bring in the king. Rook h4, says Titan chess. Oh, you want to stop king? But I'm not scared of king c4, king c3. I was more scared of the e pawn. If they go for that pawn, I think I'm ready to run already. I don't know what you guys think, but to me, this looks very dangerous for, for black. This pawn is very fast. And you have this bishop dominating the, the knight, right? e4 all right and now this move should be played without thinking right if we stick to the topic of today play king e3 before they play king d2 like in pawn endings right rook d8 okay you're not giving up uh what's going on here can i take the pawn rook takes uh no oh it's it gets complex here yeah maybe you're right but i, I don't think a white uh, loses here though my pawn is is fast here right Rook D2 check, Tactical Magician says, all right, not to fight with you, I'll just go back, and if you want to draw, I'll give you the draw. If you want to win, you will also risk to lose, right? <laughs> okay, Rook D3 and Rook F3, all right, I'll run with my pawn. I don't see how you can make this work. This must be extremely dangerous, fast pawns. Knight B3, this won't work, I'm afraid, uh, Tactical Magician, use all your tactic, but maybe you can make a draw here, but that's what you mean? Some mate coming up. Knight c2 check. King d3. Wow. How is that possible? No, that's not... I understand. Extremely pretty idea, but, uh, you know, I can give up material now. It's too late. Exactly. I'll take here. 
and it's too late for you. I can quaint and yeah. Let me know if I missed some cheap tactic here, but this seems to me that white will win. Uh, notice I used my key. <laughs> we learned our lesson today. Anyway, back to back to the initial position. King d6. I think rook g6 makes things slightly more complex. We should think about our priorities also. With black, I mean. Um, which of these pawns would, would we like to take, for example? And so on. Um, all right. Princess Megan, you're on. Uh, with the black pieces, please go ahead. What was your solution here? King c6. We will use our king as an attacking piece. That's exactly what happened in the game. White played at this point rook uh, g6. I could try to prevent your plan with c4, but in that case, maybe knight b3 and you can attack this pawn with the knight. So I'll play rook g7, rook g6, sorry, to take that pawn. Please go ahead. Yeah, bye, Titan says. Good luck. King d5, exactly. Rook takes f6. King takes a5. Everybody understands. Why did we take this pawn? Well, because now we have a passed pawn, a very strong passed pawn. The fact that it's located far away from white's king is, of course, a big plus for us. King f2 was played in the game. And here some people were saying king b5, which was perfectly okay also. But I like this move even more. That's what Fedose played in the game. So we have, just to repeat this from the very beginning, we have four consecutive king moves here. I saw this plan in a game by Korsnoy. I think I put it in my endgame book also. A very nice game of Korsnoy where he brought in the king. I think there was a pawn structure like that. And he brought in his king like this and he took the pawn of b2. So maybe Fedose, I'm pretty sure he saw that game as well. Or he knew, knew about this method, of course, from before. And this is how he continued his game. Let's have a quick look at what happened. King f2, white knows, of course, they have to use the king. King a4, like, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, Princess Megan was saying. King a4, they're followed here. Um, let's see, where are we? This, it's a long game, but okay, we, we'll look quickly. Rook f7, a5, time to run with the passed pawn, king e2. Anyone, what did the black play here? Anyone, just to see if you're awake, of course, means thanks, you're right, king b3. We should play actively with the king, attack this pawn, but even more importantly, we should try to run with, the, with the, our passed pawn. Rook c7, b6, rook c6, and uh, here black played a nice move. Um, should I quiz you for this one? No, I don't think so. Just write me in the chat, please. What do you think Black played here? Yeah, Rook B8, exactly. So once you play this move, you understand that I can give up this pawn and my passed pawn is much faster. Usually we would say that bishops are stronger than knights when we have uh, passed pawns uh, races. However, in this case, Black's king makes a huge difference, right? It's helping the pawn and so on. And also there are rooks on the board. So, yeah, nothing really to, more to add about this example. They just continue to run. And here, of course, yeah, this move I will quiz you for, of course. Yeah, this move I'm forced to quiz you on this one. Let's see if we can get this right. All right, just two moves. We can take our time, says Princess Megan. That's right. We have a lot of tempo uh, extra here. Oh, can you play like that, says Samurai? Tactical magician. Yeah, probably you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. No problem. Yeah, no fighting. Uh, I'll accept that move. Yeah. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. Yeah, you got it. So, Chess Samurai, Tactical Magician, Ryan, Guinea Pig, GM, L0, Zay, Tori Chess, Jitong, Jiang Hu, Princess Megan, Hank, Pando, Min Sphinx. You all got it. Nobody wanted to play the way I wanted to play. Nice. That's, uh, that's excellent. Aha. The only thing we should not do here is, of course, let them sack uh, on the pawn. That would be a huge mistake. Even if it's winning, we should avoid that. Yeah, I'm happy if, if you didn't play A2. I'm happy for you because you should, of course, not give them a chance to sack. So uh, please go ahead, uh, Guinea Pig. What did you play here with the black pieces? Pretty idea. I call this the bridge or curtains, maybe. We simply don't want their bishop to be touching the A2 square. So please go ahead, Guinea Pig. We're waiting for you. Please play your move. Else I will ask uh, someone else. Right. Uh, Tori Chess, please go ahead. What do you play here, Tori Chess? Pretty move to help our passed pawn to advance. Exactly. Knight b3, rook f6. And here you played a2, which is perfectly fine, uh, provided that if rook f2, what was your idea, Tori Chess? Yeah, nothing to, to be confused about. Or maybe there are several ways to win. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You got it right. And you will just 
uh, queen next turn. Taking on a2, it's too high in price. So I get the point. But I think even cleaner was to take uh, on on c3. But I understand that nobody uh, would say that. Yeah, th th that's it's fine to play the way you play also. So nice. That's what happened. Uh, almost happened in the game. They played in the game. Uh, oh, he did play that. Yeah, he did. He, he took the pawn. So don't blame me. That's what Fedosev played in the game. But a2 was even simpler, like Tori Chess was explaining. So that's how the game went. King takes and uh, later on black. Yeah, that's a funny move. Yeah, to, to sack and play a2. Black went on to win in this game. All right. So I hope we got it uh, figured out. I hope everybody understood what we're saying here. We should use our king as an active piece. I mean, if we didn't know about this topic, we would play maybe something like rook d8. We would say, all right, time to bring in the rook and so on. But then we would give white dangerous counterplay on, on the king side. They would try to run with this pawn and so on. Uh, also notice that this pawn is the more tasty pawn for white, just like that pawn is the most tasty pawn for black because both sides would like to create fast pawns, right? So, uh, safe to say, king c6, very, very strong move. Just take the pawn and then try to run with the a pawn. All right, uh, let's see. What else do I have prepared for today? I feel we have seen very many examples today. Um, maybe we could have a look at one last, uh, one last example here. Yeah, I think this will be our last example. Um, we have worked very well today. So we have this game from last year's European uh, qualifier uh, hybrid tournament. Uh, and this game was a clash between generations because we have with the white pieces, uh, Norwegian grandmaster Simon Agenstein, um, famous player and also famous coach of Magnus Carlsen and playing black, black French grandmaster Maxime Lagarde. So here we're playing with white pieces. You can see that white is two pawns up. However, black has quite some counterplay. We can see that, for example, there are ideas like, yeah, he played soccer for the Norwegian national team. Yeah, one of the few chess players, I would say, who have also been strong uh, football or soccer players. Aha. Yeah, soccer, you say, in the US, right? So rookie four, rook takes it two, rookie three. There are many ideas here for, for white. Uh, yeah, I have played soccer, but definitely not on Simon Agnestein's uh, level. Anyway, let's have a look at how Agnestein managed to win this game and actually qualify to the next match in the European qualifier last year. So let's see if you can get this one right. I think it's a very, it's a complex, but very pretty, pretty example. All right. Uh, let's do this one minute 15. All right, here we go. So why to play? We are two pawns up. It should be possible to win this, of course. That's our general feeling, but okay. Black has quite some counterplay. So what do you think would be White's most, how can I say, pleasant choice here? They were down to, they were low on time for sure at this point. Aha, that's a funny move. Careful, GM. I'll give check on E3 and I'll take your knight. No, you can't play like that, I think. Tactical magician. All right. You push the pawn. I'll take on E2, right? I'll take the pawn. Okay. Nice work by Amazon, Hank, and Tori Chess. That's definitely... Uh, what we were looking at. Uh, they played in a different way on move three, but I don't think it's a big difference. Aha. Al, strategic seamer, you also got it. Great work. Okay. L008 and Ryan, you were also very close. Aha. So I'm happy for you guys. You have noticed the idea here. Yeah, maybe not all of you, but uh, many of you have, have seen what this is about. And the Norwegian Grandmaster, he, he also noticed this. And that's why he was able to win this game which certainly didn't look easy at this point. Uh, nice. All right, so let's uh, invite uh, Alg19. Please go ahead, Alg. What's your solution here? That's right. It's time to improve that piece, right? It's time to improve our king. Had we played g5 instead, I mean, we could also argue that this is a good way of improving our king. I guess it makes a difference that black can take this pawn. Um, I don't know if, we, if we're winning here. If you think that we are winning, I understand it, but uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe I can even take that pawn. I don't know. It's not so clear. No, it's not so clear. Uh, after all, black can also go for some rook and game maybe at some point and, and so on. King, F, King F5? All right, King F5. Let's see. I, I have to be careful, no? There might be mate in the air. So what would I play with, with the black pieces here? Yeah, uh, unpleasant, unpleasant situation, no? Unpleasant. Maybe 96 is coming up also. Um, one question for you. If I go for the rook endgame, are you sure you will win here? Is this winning? 
Rook takes and I put my king on. Well, where would I put my king on? G7? It's clear that this is winning. Oh, king is six and you, you want to play that. Okay, I can maybe play king g6 then, right? I understand. You have a plan of, of taking all my pawns. <laughs> uh, I have to be careful about that. Yeah, maybe you're winning here. King d6. Perfectly possible. It wouldn't surprise me if, if uh, white is winning here. Yeah. Nice. Nice idea. And, and perfectly according to our topic today. So maybe maybe that also works, right? Let's have another look at this. So we are saying g5. Black should probably take this pawn while they can. King g4. All right. So what did I play last time? Should I go for the other pawn maybe? Rook e4? Is that possible? So if king takes i take that pawn maybe yeah i don't know what's going on here maybe 96 and white is still fighting here for a win yeah looks scary no even ideas like king g6 and rook f8 uh -huh. interesting yeah i guess i'm not able to come up with a good uh, answer to this um somehow i get a feeling that i should be able to make a, to make a, a draw here well, sorry let me try again i'll take let's say i i play a5 is that is that possible try to trade pawns easy win i don't know if, if you say it's an easy win uh, that's your opinion but it, this doesn't look like an easy win. king g6 says that tactical magician all right i'll take the pawn and i'll try to defend passively then right you can just take right yeah this was very unpleasant for black i don't know what 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 mistake did i make here but this looks very unpleasant aha uh -huh. safe to say this is very unpleasant for black. You know what? Maybe I could go for this plan, right? I could play, play rook c2. When you take the pawn, I'll just run. No, I can't do that, right? You'll, you'll just bring in the king. And I was hoping to, to sack somehow and bring in the king. And so No, this looks horrible. You're right. So I, I should give you half a point if you said g5. Uh, this looks, at least for me, this looks difficult for, for black to save also. Maybe there is some small detail that, that we're missing here. But I can't exactly tell you what, what that de detail would be um so nice nice work nice work yeah excellent in the game on the other hand let's uh, go back to al please go ahead al let's wrap this up um they played king h4 exactly so now black uh, they can't really play the same way they can take the pawn of course if they take in this way um now it's even better than the previous case no because we, we keep an extra pawn on top of everything else so this is clearly improved version of what we just looked at. So after king h4, in the game, they played here rook e4. Please continue, Alg. White's next move is not difficult to understand. Exactly, king g5. Black can now take the pawn on b4, but that would lead to huge trouble, right? What would you play here, uh, Alg? Mate in the air already, right? Exactly, 96 hitting the bishop and we're ready to play. I don't know, there must be some mating um, uh, scenario here, right? Anyone with this? I think I saw it already, but okay, I'll wait for you. What do you think, guys? Where is the mate? I think I see. Exactly, Eric. Excellent. King h6, that's right. Rook f8. Pretty mate. Now, this pawn, you can see it's helpful also to prevent bishop d6. Aha. So, in the game, they didn't dare to take the pawn. They gave check first. So, here, many people played king g6, which they didn't play in the game. I'm still struggling to understand it, but I guess it's because I could take the pawn... If you play 96, I can take. I have to give back the material somehow, right? This must be the reason, right? King f5 at this point. No, this doesn't make sense. Black is completely lost here. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I don't have the answer. I don't know. I think your move is fine also. King g6 looks perfectly fine. In the game, they play King h6. I guess simply because he saw him maybe in time trouble that 96 is coming up. And in this way, he's creating this mating net, right? So that's what happened in the game. Uh, Bishop e7 was played in the rookie seven was played in the game, so that knight e6 is uh, rendered a bad mistake. No, this would be a tragic comical end to the game. However, uh, white uh, played uh, something else here, white played something much stronger. All right, guys, I'll quiz you for the next move just to see if you're awake. All right, let's see very quickly how to continue here. We have a winning advantage already, thanks to our active king, mainly thanks to that. We are winning this game already. All right, Guinea Pig. Uh, is that a good idea? Guinea Pig and uh, Ryan and Natas out to the chess. If I play Rook E6 check, what's your next move? I think that's a self-call, no? Speaking about soccer, 
That's not a good idea. Uh, don't put the knight there, please. All right, static similar. Your mate did in one, right? I I'll meet you there. Yeah, we will. This is the last example because I can see some people are already tired, uh, running into b bad mistakes. Uh, Hank, you got it. Congratulations to Hank, the only winner so far. Um, a lot of people are losing the game here. <laughs> That's another interesting topic: endgame blunders. There are many of those. Means thanks. Great work. We have two winners here. So please go ahead, uh, Means thanks. What's your solution here? Rook T1, exactly. I mean, look at the pieces. You can see that the rook is the one who needs to become more active. Rook T1, smart move. We're trying to deflect the bishop from this diagonal, which is very important for black. If the bishop moves away, now we don't have to worry about the mate anymore, right? Now we're ready to play knight. That's exactly how the game went. The king came back. After all, white is still two pawns up, right? And they have improved their position a lot since the very beginning. The game uh, doesn't last very long. Rook F7. And you can guess the next move here, right? Uh, mean Sphinx. Some people play it on move one. Well, that's certainly not rook h1. Uh, you, but you can probably play that also. Maybe I can... Don't you think you blundered here again? This was a, the most tricky endgame we have ever had, I think. People are blundering all the time. Yeah, sorry, Mean Sphinx. You're, but you're not the only one who have blundered today, so don't worry. Aha. Uh, exactly. Run with the pawn, please. Run with the pawn. The, our rook is well placed here. So what about those endgame blunders? Yeah, some people were saying here, knight g6, that's certainly the worst move in the position. Uh, rook h7 comes. And another bad move, which was uh, proposed by some people. Yeah, we're getting tired. I know, we're, we're finishing now by this example. Rook e6, you forgot about this angle. And you're losing the, the knight. No. But I mean, a, a strong chess player should be awake at any time, right? We should never blunder if possible. We can all play bad moves. But that's something else. Bad moves is, is one thing. Blunders is something else. Nobody has a right to blunder, I would say. Uh, anyway, yeah, I have a call. No problem, no problem. No need for excuses here. We're all here to learn. So going back to the beginning here, what Agnestein noticed was that it's time to improve the king. G5 was sort of interesting, but even cleaner, it seems, was this move king h4. And after black played in the game, uh, what did I play? Rookie 4. We just continue with our plan. And here we are again using our king for attacking means. King h6, preparing to go knight g6 uh, in some variations. Yeah, not against rook e7. And we're trying to catch black's king in mating that. After rook e7, white could not play knight g6. But just like Means Fence explained, it's time to improve our rook only when black leaves this diagonal. By the way, rook h7 here, it's not really a big deal. We can just move our king. So only when black's bishop leaves, then we're ready to play knight g6. We keep our two extra pawns and we can use this passed pawn to win the game. So nice uh, work by everyone. I guess that's it for today. Next time we will have a look at more endgames featuring the idea of active king. Thanks uh, to Chess uh, Dojo, Chessable, and of course USCS with Greg Shahadi. Thanks and see you next time.